Welcome dear friends to another episode of how to build a computer transistor. Uh, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get started. Uh, last time we left off with the controls and there was one special control and that was the control of the jump. There are two ways to jump, a jump no matter what or a jump just on carry. So when the carry flag is high it jumps and otherwise it doesn't jump. A conditional jump as this. Uh, I made a challenge of it, that was the resolution that I found and that I built. Since I already had a board that uh, contained octal NOT gates for the buffer that I used at the end, I reworked the circuitry to this. Um, this slide is also in the Google Drive if you want to look at it in more detail. Here you find the OR gate in the AND gate, NOR and AND gate, but together with the NOT gates they become OR and AND gates. Here you see the completed board. An empty board it is, but it works. If you have this part uh, built and working, uh, then the CPU, the transistor CPU is done. Uh, so at this point I would like to rename it, as I call it within my family all the time. It's called Serenity, or Serenity 1 if you like, but for now on it is Serenity. For those people who took really attention to this series, I've made some changes since the introductory episode. I changed the program counter. You know, orig original it was a JK flip-flop, but I changed it. I changed the control electronics into a uh, uh, octal end gate board and I added the jump circuits, just that you know. In the last uh, tutorials I tried to explain uh, Serenity as simple as possible and uh, I know where I'm going to continue for a part, but for the other part I need your input. The th thing I'm sure for sure can do is uh, troubleshooting. I never showed you the things that go wrong and you need to be uh, quite good electrician and know your system very well to keep uh, Serenity up and running. Then there are some programming rules. You cannot uh, input two sets of data on the same bus at the same time, for example. Then I would like to focus on the stability of the system. I would like to know how fast it can go. I am thinking about expanding it with RAM and ROM. I made a CPU out of transistors but I don't necessarily want to make a whole computer out of transistors, so I can make a transistor ROM, which is uh, 11 uh, uh, transistors per bit, <laughs> or I can use a chip. Either way, it still is a transistor CPU. I can expand the ALU with logic functions, or I can focus myself on optimized wiring, for example, use only PCBs. Then my question to you, maybe you want simpler projects. Uh, I'm a bit focused on transistor, logic gates, flip-flop based. Easier projects are uh, a clock that uh, counts the hours for 24 hours, made with uh, flip-flops, maybe JK flip-flops. A simple calculator is possible. I, I can make a 4-bit minimal version of Serenity so as light as possible, or I can make a standalone ALU. I can also go the other way, make it more complicated. This was a 100 hour project, this will be much more. And the example would be to make a von Neumann architecture 4-bit or 8-bit processor. Would be 200-300 hours, I guess. Let me know in the comments what you prefer. Um, I really appreciate your feedback. So now <coughs> back to the errors in this system. I first give you the clock. If you notice uh, when the clock uh, exceeds the value 16, something goes wrong and you see it on the entire left. Oh, here it comes again. First it needs to go to 16. Then you see the 32, but the next step, the 64 goes on as, as well. That's not correct. 
But before I am going to repair it, I would like to think with you how how is the error? Which wire did I did do wrong? It doesn't bother me a lot because uh, I usually use the first 16 clock cycles, and I'm glad that the 64 is uh, cut halfway. But it's not normal, and it's, it's a genuine error. Here it comes again. It's very systematic. So, in dealing with uh, serenity, it's smart to make a, uh, a hypothesis what is going wrong. I think some wires below got mixed up or make contact or something. Uh, I'm really interested in how to solve this. I'm not going to do this this uh, episode. What we are going to solve uh, today is uh, a problem I had with the Z ROM. Um, I had a program that uh, loaded Z, the value of Z, to all registers and they all went dead. So, what is going wrong? First, that what I did was check if uh, the output of the Z ROM register had a value. So I took my uh, little 8 LED board and uh, yes, when I uh, connected Z out, there was a value. So that was not the issue. Then I thought, well, this must be the control electronics. So I uh, removed the control electronics and that's a lot of work because if you look at it here, the back side of the control electronics is where the 16 uh, control wires are housed. So to loosen that is a lot of work and a lot of chance of uh, putting it back wrong. So I wasn't happy about that. And after that I didn't find anything wrong. I measured continuity on all uh, circuits that needed continuity. There was nothing wrong. In the end, what was wrong was that the um, clock signal didn't work. The wire had slipped out of its connector. And so without uh, uh, the clock, there's no synchronization, there's no signal, and that's why the uh, registers stay empty. I fixed that, and here is uh, also how it uh, works as it should work. So you see, um, you think it's one thing, it is another. Always a mystery. With well, this is it for this uh, video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, let me know what you think of how this channel should go further. Easier, harder, uh, more practice knowledge, lab results. Thanks also to JLC PCB. And of course you can find all the files you need on uh, the Google Drive, which is in the description. Okay, bye-bye for now.